Question 1-3, what is the difference between entering into a long forward contract when the forward price is $50 and taking a long position in a call option with a strike price of $50? So there are two big differences and we can combine them into uh, um, one chart here. The, when, we, when a buyer and a seller enter into a forward contract, both are obligated. So both have a commitment to do something. However, no money changes hands. So the buyer... Uh, as the price of the underlying asset uh, goes up, the payoff for the buyer continues to increase. Uh, so there's unlimited gains. If the price drops, there are unlimited losses. Well, theoretically, because it's bounded below by zero, but there are unlimited losses. The losses don't stop. The other thing I want to point out about the forward contract is the payoff is the profit. We don't have to change the shape of the curve at all to account for the profit. We don't have to shift it in any direction simply because no money changed hands. A buyer and a seller enter into a forward contract, no money changes hands. So your payoff and your profit are exactly the same, and it's a linear comb combination or a linear relationship to the price of the underlying. For an option, uh, the buyer has a right, the seller has an obligation. So we have a contingent contract, not necessarily a commitment. So if the price of the asset were under $50, uh, the buyer of the call option wouldn't exercise. The payoff would be zero. And that would be the same for the seller. The payoff would be zero. So we have uh, a, a limited loss uh, for the caller, for, for the caller, <laughs> for the buyer of the call. And then after that, the payoff is identical to the payoff had he entered into a forward contract. So he gets the same payoff as the forward on the upside with limited downside, saying my payoff could be zero or something positive. The difference with the option that we don't have with the forward is that the payoff line and the profit line are different. The profit line gets shifted downwards by the amount of the call. So the buyer had to pay the seller something, that's the premium, which is will denote a C naught. So if it's not exercised, while the payoff of the contract is zero, the profit of the contract is negative up to the $50 point. And then it starts to climb until it hits a break-even point. And the break-even point is the exercise price plus whatever the premium is. So if I can exercise at 50, I don't actually make a profit until I cover my cost of acquiring that contract. So my profit uh, uh, will be lower under the call option than it would be under the forward. However, I have a limited loss versus an unlimited loss here. So above $50, the forward is more profitable. So if the price ends above 50, I wish I were in the forward. If you look over here below $50 minus the premium, minus the premium on the call, the option loses less because if we extend the forward contract down, this point here, where the loss is identical for the forward and for the option, this distance in here is the call premium. So uh, below 50 minus C0, we wish we were in the call option. Above $50, we wish we were in the forward contract. Question 1-5. An investor enters into a short forward contract to sell 100,000 British pounds for US dollars at an exchange rate of 1.5000 dollars per pound. How much does the investor gain or lose if the exchange rate at the end of the contract is A, 149, and B, 152? So the investor entered into a short forward contract. So the investor is short. And um, um, the quote we're given, 1.50, if we're looking at it in terms of a currency quote, uh, it would be written uh, like this. And currencies are always quoted in pairs, uh, with the first pair being a 1. So 1 British pound buys 150 US dollars. And so that's how we read all currency quotes. So when I see 1.50, I want to put it in a term that I can understand. 1 British pound buys $1.50. US dollars. Now, when we're trading currencies, uh, and, and here we're really just trying to figure out the gain or loss, but we need to be specific. The question says, how much does the investor gain or lose 
if the exchange rate at the end of the contract is 149 and 152, you cannot just give me a number. You must give me a number in the proper currency. If this currency changes, am I going to gain or lose US dollars or am I going to gain or lose British pounds? It matters. The order of the currency matters. So we're looking at the, uh, the uh, uh, pound, the, the sterling dollar here. Uh, the payoff, whenever you trade this, uh, this particular spot rate or any contract where it's quoted this way, the payoff will always be in the currency of the second pair. So the payoff is going to be in US dollars. So as the rate goes from 150 to 149, I can calculate the quantity in terms of, of a number, but the currency will always be in US dollars. If on the other hand, it were quoted the other way around as USD, if we had written it this way, and whatever this rate happens to be, if it's $1.50, this would be 0.6667, and we traded the currency in reverse, the payoff would be in British pounds. It wouldn't be in US dollars, it would be in British pounds. Just something you, you want to know about how it actually works in the real world. You have to be careful about uh, 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 when you're asked how much money would you make. You can't just quote it in one currency. You have to quote it in the correct currency. In this case, we would be making US dollars. So let's go. We have, we started at 150 minus 149. That is the direction that we want to go is 0 0.0100. The difference between the two is 0 0.0100 times $100,000 because it dropped 100 pips. Uh, this is one penny. The first two mean they're a penny. The other two decimal places, these are called pips. And there are 100 pips in a penny. So we have a change of 100 pips times $100,000. If you multiply that out, it is 1,000 US dollars. The gain or loss is in pounds now because it's in dollars, right? B asks us, what if it were 152? Well, 150 minus 1. 52 is negative 0 0.02, negative 200 pips times 100,000, you would lose $2,000. A trader enters into a short cotton futures contract when the futures price is 50 cents per pound. The contract is for delivery of 50,000 pounds. How much is the trader gain or lose if the cotton price at the end of the contract is 48.2 per pound and 51.3 per pound? Well, that's easy enough. We uh, would solve it the same way we solved the previous question. Uh, we are short at 50 and minus 48.2 uh, cents per pound will give us 1.8 cents. The contract is for 50,000 pounds. So if we multiply 50,000, uh, times 1.8, we will get 90,000. But this is cents now. These are all in pennies. So if we divide that by 100, we will get $900. Most uh, uh, contracts for ag products, uh, when I say ag, corn, wheat, soybean, live cattle, uh, uh, hogs, these are typically always quoted in pennies. Uh, so when we see a, a quote on corn, for instance, and you see that uh, corn is being quoted at uh, 392 and uh, 1 8th, uh, um, that's not $392 uh, and 1 8th of a dollar. That's uh, 392 pennies per bushel. So it would be $3.92 per bushel. Same with soybean. Soybean might be quoted as 10.75. Uh, that's not $1,075, that's $10.75 per bushel. So just be aware that um, we don't put 0 0.50 and 0 0.482 in front of this. It is quoted full uh, as full pennies, and then you just have to make the conversion at the end to turn it into dollars. So our second one, we were short at 50 cents, minus 51.30. Uh, gives us negative 1.3 pennies. It doesn't sound like a lot, pennies, negative 1.3 pennies, but we got to do that 50,000 times. Uh, so we're, uh, we've lost 65,000 pennies. Uh, of course, divided by our 100 pennies to get a dollar means we have lost $650. So on these contracts, especially when the underlying is a huge quantity, 
Uh, pennies, pennies can add up to significant dollars. 116, a trader writes a December put option with a strike price of $30. The price of the option is $4. Under what circumstances does the trader make a gain? So I've written, we have to be very clear what I've done here, I've written a put option. And I get, that means I get $4. I'm the writer of it, so I get $4. It's got a strike price of $30. So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw my chart here. So I'm going to put a point right here. And this is $4. I get to keep that $4. So as long as the price is above $30, I get to keep that $4. As the price of the underlying, and I'll put the price here, uh, the notation here to show you what it is. As the price of the underlying starts to drop, this is what happens to the put contract. So, there we go. I'm in a better position now to answer this question. Under what circumstances does the trader make a gain? Well, $30, under below 30 I start losing. But I got $4 for doing that. So it could fall all the way down to $26, and that would be my break-even point. So that's the first thing I want to know. My break-even point will be $30 minus 4 equals 26. So I will make a gain on any on any finish of the underlying greater than $26. I will make a gain. 